It's amazing when you plant the plants that the things show up. It's like the only thing that I could guarantee the Pulitzer when we started was like, yes, there will be creatures. We're creating a kind of infrastructure for people, but it's also really about this idea of infrastructure in urban settings for biodiversity. The Pulitzer commissioned Studio Land Arts to do a design project in the lot across the street from the museum. So it was a broad, open scope. We knew we wanted to create a garden space. We've used this site over the last several years for temporary artist projects. Looking at the history of how we've used the site and what we might look to do with the site in the future, we thought, let's do something a little bit more long-term. Let's look at how we can be more sustainable. Think about what it means to be a neighbor and how can we invite a creative process in that has to do with landscape. This project is called Park-like. There's three main ideas with it. It's a rain garden, it's a native plant installation, and it's also a kind of public space. A rain garden really is pretty simple. It's just a way that you can capture rainwater and store it on site temporarily, rather than letting it run into the street or into the gutter. We're creating spaces for water to sit and pool for a while. But our goal isn't to let water sit for more than three days. We want it to infiltrate into the soil, which means seep into the soil really slowly. So we're keeping water on site and storing it. Plants are a huge driver here. All the plants that you see here we've produced in Granite City from seed or from seed that we've collected or bought. One of the things that happens in the design process for this kind of space is deciding which plants should go at what elevation and which plants are going to tolerate water and the wet and dry cycle that happens in a rain garden with the water retention. But secondly, you also have to consider aesthetics. The paths have been designed so that they give you specific views. The height of these two different hills that we built really helps people witness the water flow throughout the garden so that they can come to understand how a rain garden might work. As you walk along a path, you're going to see different kinds of plants planted in a way that mimics that how they would be in nature, but with color theory and bloom time and what time of year the visitor is going to be here kept in mind as well. If there's something that's an obstacle, you got to figure out how to make that obstacle something that you can use to your advantage in some way. There's so many unknowns when you're starting a project, especially when you're digging into the ground, because you can't see what's there. So we have a plan, we have a model, we have drawings about how we want to approach this project. But once you start to dig, then the reality hits. And for us, that meant that we hit multiple buildings, because we started pulling up all these amazing pieces, you know, architectural details and hand-carved bits. So we've been using that building material as aesthetic interest and riprap, and also to fill our gabion baskets and create benches and retaining walls. What has been wonderful about working with Studio Land Arts is that they've been able to be responsive to the site. It really became a process of responding and building and adapting. We're building you know, gardens in low points, so every time it rains, our site would fill with water and get super muddy. So it's been a real challenge in that way. But the positive side to that is that we've really got to see firsthand multiple times how water works on the site. So we can see where it flows, we can see where we need to make adjustments, and that's really an amazing way to work, where if you're designing something only on paper from a satellite view, you'll never know those things. This is such a site responsive process, which is really unique and unusual, and that's one of the things that I love about working with Studio Land Arts. This is the thing that I'm most proud of in my life right now. <laughs>